Well, hey, good morning, everybody. I brought you all out here today so we can talk about how to photograph water. Now, first, we're going to go over what kind of gear you're going to need, and then we're going to talk about the specific settings that you're going to want to use in your camera. So first part of gear that you're going to want is a tripod. This is really important, so don't forget it. And the second thing you're going to want is called a polarizing filter. Now, the kind that I've got here today is actually called a circular polarizer, which means that it's round and threaded so that I can screw it right on the front of my lens and it makes it very convenient. Now, as you can see here, circular polarizers are made out of two components that allow them to rotate or spin on top of each other. And that glass is fairly tinted. Now, what's happening inside of here is as you rotate those two pieces together, there are very thin little lines that uh, mesh together. And as they do that, they block heavy wavelengths of light that are reflecting off the surface of the water. And that's how you can get that really cool effect that allows you to see through the water and see the rocks underneath and things like that. Really cool effect that you can only achieve with a polarizing filter. Another thing that you might possibly need would be what's called an ND filter or a neutral density filter, which I do have one with me here today. And what that does, like you can see, this is tinted. An ND filter is pretty much just sunglasses that tint the light even further. Now, before we get to manipulating our camera settings, let's first talk about what's the desired effect we want to have in our image. Now, I've already got the polarizing filter on here. And remember, as I turn that, I'm going to take the glare off the water and allow us to see through and see the rocks. That's going to be something really cool that I want to happen in my image. Another thing that I actually want to happen is I want to blur the motion of all this water. You know when you see those photos of waterfalls and rivers and the water looks like silver ribbons going around the rock? Well, the way you do that is by leaving your shutter open for a prolonged period of time. So come on over here, let's talk about these settings. The first thing we're gonna do is switch to manual mode. And actually, I use aperture priority mode a lot of the time, but for the case of education today, we're gonna use manual mode so I can really explain all these settings to you guys. Now, the first setting we wanna change is our ISO. You're actually gonna want that to be pretty low. So I'm gonna set mine to 100. Now remember, the ultimate effect that I'm going for is I want the water to be really blurred out to draw out that motion. And by turning my ISO down, I'm effectively starving the camera for light. And so it's gonna to wanna to compensate either by having a wide aperture or by slowing down the shutter speed, which is what I want. The aperture, on the other hand, we're gonna to set to a very small aperture. I'm gonna go for F16. And by closing that aperture, again, we're starving the camera for light, but also we're increasing our depth of field so that more of the image is gonna appear in focus. So now that we've got that set, let's set our shutter speed. And it looks like I'm gonna slow it down to... So I'm gonna slow it down to just under a second. Now the next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is change my shutter release method. And as you can see here, I've got it set to two second timer. Now what that does is when I push my shutter button, it counts down, one, two, then takes the photo. And by doing that, I'm not shaking the camera as I'm pushing the button, taking the picture. The whole point of the camera being on the tripod is that it's not moving. And I don't wanna mess that up by wiggling my camera every time I take a picture. Now, one thing that I find makes it easier for me at least to compose the image and to set it up is to set my camera in a live view mode. This just makes it easier to set up your image, especially when your tripod is low like mine is right now. Now for a photo like this, you want your focus point to be about a third of the way through your image. If you haven't seen my article about getting sharp landscape photos, be sure to check that out. I explain depth of field and all that in here. And now as you can see in the image here, you can see the glare on the water and everything. So I'm gonna rotate my filter and right there. Now, I just remembered I was supposed to tell you guys about ND filters. I wanted my shutter speed to be long so that I could blur the motion of the water. Let's say it's really bright outside and because of that, my camera doesn't want me to increase the shutter speed or it's gonna make my image too bright. So what the ND filter does is if I put that on the front of my lens, it's gonna darken it and allow me to keep my shutter speed longer like I want it to. Okay, well, I hope you guys learned something today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Subscribe to this channel and find me on the mountain.com.